You're going to showboat, knock down the shot. For what his value is, he doesn't equate to winning basketball. When you're talking about the greatest of greats, that's what you have to do. You have to nitpick. We'll see you in the playoffs. We'll see you in the playoffs. Welcome, everybody, back to the TM Up podcast. A few weeks off. But we're feeling good. A lot of basketball to talk about. And Jared, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. It's been a while. How are you, man? Yeah, doing good. We uh, we took a few weeks off, had a little bit of illnesses. I believe you took a trip, if I'm not mistaken. You went yeah. On vacation. How was that? Yeah, I was out in L.A. Um, I visited family for a week, and I actually was able to catch a uh, Clippers-Knicks game, um, nice. which was uh, Clippers. It was, a, it was a rough night, but R.J. Barrett of the Knicks looked really good, really good, as he's looked pretty good these yeah. past couple of weeks. And uh, it was kind of wild because it was the first time I've ever sat on, like, the 100 level of a game, and mm-hmm. I was, like, 10 feet away from Jerry West at one point. Like, it was oh, wow. crazy. That's awesome. Good to go check out the new – crypto.com arena oh no no that's still staples <laughs> that's staples and it's funny because i was talking to some people out there in la i'm so like we got this whole thing with the sears tower back in chicago land oh yeah, it's yeah like it's the sears tower i'm not even going to mention the its other name um it is, it is and they're cool. like oh yeah yeah no it's it's a uh, it's staples and i'm like all right yeah i figured but as an nba fan it's the same way for me kobe and Shaq played in staples it's staples. of course and I'm I'm just not gonna buy into the the crypto thing. So you know what, staples. We'll just we'll leave it at that. No, I got you. I it's got weird a lot that of people... everything's blue in there now, though. Yeah, that's, that's got to be strange, especially for you know they're the they're the yellow and gold man or the gold and or oh my god, gold and purple. Can't get it right. Can't get the well. Yeah, right. but like staples had like red. True, accents because it's the Clippers. The yeah. and, and it, it was it was just nice. Now it's just the yeah court looks weird. Definitely, man. Well, without further ado, let's just jump right into what we've been missing. And I think it's fair to say that we're past the slow scoring slump that the league was kind of on at the beginning of the season. We started off blaming, you know, a weird off season, but mostly it was kind of the change from a Spalding ball to a Wilson ball is what we really talked about at the beginning of the season. I think we can say that there's no longer a problem with the basketball. Mm -hmm. Players have been exploding with high scoring outputs over the last few weeks. So since the all-star break, we've seen LeBron drop 56. Another game where he dropped 50. Jason Tatum dropped 54. Kyrie scored 50 and then a 60 piece. KD scored 53. Carl Anthony Towns dropped 60. And how about Sadiq Bay dropping 51 points? So, Jared, what's going on with these scores? And is this a good thing that we're seeing in the league? Uh, for fan value, I think it's a good thing. Um, as you can go on Twitter and NBA Twitter's going crazy after every night. Now, some of them are like, oh, this is the greatest era of basketball ever. And I'm like, okay, slow your roll just because there's all this scoring and stuff like that, that's not necessarily a good thing. It's not that players are necessarily more skilled. I mean, in theory, on any given night, I would say most NBA players have some capabilities to score 50. I mean, remember that stretch with, uh, who was it? It was Mo Williams and um, ah, on the Timberwolves headband, Corey Brewer. Ah, what? Corey Brewer. Corey Brewer. Yes. They both dropped 50, like, within a couple weeks of each other. So it's mm-hmm. not crazy that a player of, like, Sadiq Bay's level can get 50. It's crazy when it happens, but a lot of these NBA players have the capability. I think, if anything, it shows more of a lack of defense that is being played in the NBA or even just allowed to be played. As I've always believed, the past 20 years of NBA defenses just isn't to where it should be. I think they should give defenders a little more freedom, which we've seen this year with some changes where like you don't have Trey Young jumping into you drawing a foul when you kind of just stood your ground mm-hmm. um but it, it has been an exciting couple of weeks so I, I do think it's good for the entertainment value of the NBA especially as it tries to compete with March Madness which is a uh, well that's an uphill losing battle that the NBA is never going to win but as I've said many times NCAA basketball is only more exciting than the NBA for one month of the year so oh yeah yeah, and it's kind of funny that your your take went that way because uh, my first take took my first takeaway is look how skilled this version of the NBA is, and I want to back that up a little bit. I am one of those people that think that this league and all of the leagues continue to get more skilled as time goes on. I think that's what these players do, and I think that the lowest bar that it currently takes to be to have a roster spot in this league is as high as I feel like it's ever been. I feel like the 15th player on all of these rosters would destroy the 15th players, you know, in pretty much any era moving backward, just the way that I look at it. I think the bar in order to be on a roster is as high as it's ever been. 
But now for the scoring outputs, I think this is a combination of that skill and also the changes that has taken place over the last 20 or so years that are designed to favor that offense, exactly what you said. I think these changes are forcing the defenders to have to get more skilled as well in order to adjust to this new league, which over time I think these players will do. Um, You know, you can no longer just beat people up in the paint. You can't hit them above the shoulders. You can't close out as hard, take away their landing space. But I think these players will adjust over time. I think we'll see kind of a new era of defenders start to kind of just have to learn to be more skilled to contend with shots, especially with how good these players are. I mean, we talk about like KD, who is like impossible to guard. The guy's seven foot one and he can get his shot off anywhere. He's just one of those guys. In order to defend that guy and to stop him, especially when he's having a night where he's just not going to miss, you have to get more skilled and you have to get better with your footwork you have to get better with your hand placement and these are things that I think these players are going to do as we get more you know down the road when these changes continue to happen I think these numbers are great for the league because it's what people want to see you know we're seeing these numbers getting dropped in all different kinds of way you know Kyrie just smoothly scoring 60 points in just over three quarters I wanted to see him out there for the fourth because dude would have had a shot at the Kobe 81 I think if they really wanted to possibly not to mention, what are you saving him for, Steve Nash? He can play three games for the rest of the season. You might as well go out there and let him play the fourth quarter. You know, LeBron catching fire from the three-point line and just dominating almost all, just in the slashing game is what we've really been seeing from LeBron. Carl Anthony Towns dominating as a new age center inside now. And Sadiq Bay just shocking the rest of the league. All of a sudden, when that popped up on my phone, like, Sadiq Bay drops 51 points. I'm like, with the Pistons? Oh, well, all right. Good job, man. But Someone's got to do it. Yeah, these numbers were great to see. They're contagious, and I think we'll continue to see some more as these guys have shown the ability to really lock in on particular nights and just become these guys where they're going to put up huge numbers. They're going to drop a stat line that's going to make you look there and be like, really? Like, like There's, there's going to be nights where we're going to see like Patrick Beverly drop a 40 or something like that. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. I, it's Something like that is going to happen. But it's been crazy to see, and they've been on a run. And I'm just – at this point, it's like who's, who's going to get the next 50 piece? Like there's there's 20 names that could come to mind right now. Like mm-hmm. I, it's crazy. I think it's good for the league, and I don't know where this is going to end and what the heights are going to reach. And we're getting here towards the end of the regular season. So yeah, that basketball conversation about the Wilson versus Spalding ball seemed years in the past. It's crazy. That's gone, and it's crazy. That <laughs> was there was they were doing studies, they were writing articles. We talked about it here in this podcast. We're like, oh man, they can't adjust this new basketball. It's going to be a problem. The 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 league shooting is down, and now look where we're at. It's like, holy crap, Sadiq Bay is dropping fifty one points. And I, no disrespect to Sadiq Bay, but when you read off those other names, you know, LeBron, Kyrie, Tatum, KD, you know, Sadiq Bay is the one that kind of sticks out. They're like, really? But he I feel like there's, I feel like every season there's always one surprise 50 piece guy or like a high 40. I mean, I'll be honest, Derek Rose and uh, what was that? The 2019 NBA season. Mm -hmm. No one was expecting that guy to drop 50. Still one of my favorite nights of just sports ever. Oh my God. (laughs) Great night. Definitely. So speaking of a great night, moving on here to our next topic. Last night, LeBron James officially passed Carl Malone for second place in the all-time scoring list, now trailing only Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So where the Lakers are at this season, what has this season really meant to LeBron's ongoing legacy in your opinion? Well, to be honest, um, he's lucky uh, that this season happens to coincide with him coming up to a lot of like career long milestones in the mm-hmm. NBA. Cause otherwise this season has nothing to offer LeBron, his fans, his legacy, anything. Um, we can also now erase any doubt that Carl Malone was better than LeBron James. And of course I say that as a joke, <laughs> not serious at all. I was about to say, it's, do we got to get mostly, into that one? <laughs> I'm mostly kind of poking fun at uh, the eventual, Oh, well, He's a leading scorer all the time. He's the goat for that. It's like what? But just because he reached. Oh, a point you're just mark? trying to tee it up. Okay, I'm you. just. I'm just saying it. I got this, you. This point mark shouldn't like indicate whether someone's a goat. Because then why isn't Kareem the goat? He's well. This... People people will make that argument too. Oh yeah, but uh, Kareem's not the goat because of his. Well, obviously his scoring's a facet of his game. But anyway, getting back to LeBron, <laughs> um, it's going to be interesting to see how the season's judged. Um, in years to come, because I feel like we're starting to get into that that area where you you can kind of compare LeBron to like 
his Laker years right now to the Jordan wizard years. Obviously, in my opinion, LeBron was, uh, is currently a much better player than Jordan was at that time. Um, but in fairness to Jordan, he was older and he took like three years off and he was dealing with a bunch of knee injuries, which kind of basically sapped what once was the athletic high flying air Jordan. Um, so I'm just really interested to see how, like, maybe 10 years from now, we look back at this LeBron James stretch where the Lakers aren't really good, despite the high expectations, despite maybe some of the players on his roster, um, because they, <laughs> in any other season, they wouldn't be in a playoff window right now. Oh. Um, and he, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the plan, but I wouldn't say LeBron's a lock for making the playoffs this year through the plan. It's very likely he will be. I'd be really shocked if they don't, despite mm -hmm. possibly falling into the 10th seed. Because let's be honest, those Pelicans, they're surging a bit. I'd be a little worried. Oh, yeah, I think the Spurs are right there, too, not too far behind. It's yeah, the both Spurs. Both of them possible, yeah. The Portland Trailblazers, for some reason, won't go quietly into the night, even though that's what Anthony the management Simons, was. <laughs> Anthony Simons going nuts, but Dude, the Portland Trailblazers are like pulling guys out of the G League that are all of a sudden like averaging like twelve points per game. Like, yeah. What? What's going on? They're trying, man. They're Ooh. trying. Um, but it's 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 just a statistical achievement season for LeBron. Um, whether you say this season hurts his legacy or whether it's like, well, oh, whatever, he's done so much already. He's gained all these achievements now. That's up to you to decide, uh, the fans. Um, uh, it's just it's just the stats stuff in season. That's all. Yeah, I'm, I'm of – I think LeBron has reached the level where I don't think there's pretty much anything he can do to hurt his legacy. I think his legacy is cemented. It can only go up from here is the way I see it. Where, like, if he has a couple more seasons where he's just a middling type player, I don't think at the end of the day we're going to say that that lowered his legacy. Because just like you mentioned, MJ with uh, the Wizards, that didn't lower his legacy. Like, if it, anything, it helped it. It's cemented. And I think LeBron, he can never go down. He's only He only has the ability to go up from here. So I've been fighting this, this battle all season. LeBron, the Lakers – the haters, especially over on our TikTok page, we've seen a lot of those. And I've come with a simple solution that everyone should be okay with. And I think it's very simple. The Lakers suck and LeBron is still great. That's all right. That's fine. It's They're not mutually exclusive. That's fine. LeBron's great. He's getting his numbers. He's doing him. He's not, his play cannot be blamed for the Lakers' lack of success. Oh God, Lakers no. suck. That's fine. Look, this roster doesn't work. That's been abundantly clear since essentially day one. LeBron has had statistically the greatest year 19 of any NBA player in the history of the league. That's just stats. Simply looking at points per game before mm -hmm. James, the best was Kareem, who averaged 14 points per game. LeBron is sitting at just under 30. Um, he has a shot at a scoring title here in year 19, all while shooting 52% from the field. He's eight rebounds, six assists. You couldn't statistically ask more from him. Team-wise, I think this means nothing to his legacy. It's a lost season that we'll all forget about, much like MJ's wizard seasons, much like MJ's seasons really without Scottie Pippen when he missed the playoffs as well. Oh, no. MJ haters don't let anyone forget those. <laughs> I, well, I'm just saying. But individually, he cemented his status as the greatest old player in NBA history the way that I look at it. He's, con he's continued to climb those all-time ranks. All of this, to me, is just another notch in the GOAT's belt. So the way that I see it, just another little thing, little tip of the cap, and that he'll eventually pass Kareem as well. I think that's pretty much just going to be a set and done. He basically has to average 20 points a game for another, like, 60 games, and he'll get there. So it's almost a set and done thing at this point. So he will eventually be the all-time scoring leader. I just think this was another just, like, holy crap, this is where he's actually at in his career, and I think it's just – People who spend all day, every day hating on LeBron, just enjoy it because he's not going to be here forever. You know, there, there is a time limit on these things. He's not he's not going to be Tom Brady. So there's a time limit on these things. Yeah, I um, I plugged in LeBron and Carmelo Malone to the NBA, uh, like the player comparison thing on basketball mm -hmm. reference. And I was actually shocked to see that it took LeBron like 200 less games to get yeah. to where Carmelo Malone is. I was actually I was shocked. Like, I wouldn't have been surprised if like LeBron took it or did in last games but like 200 games that's 
Yeah. That's like almost three seasons. Well, and okay. over over on this side, that's one of the arguments that we'll have when people talk about LeBron is, yes, he's he, a lot of these things where he's reached and he's passed, he's done things on less games. And I'm not going to get into the whole playoff and regular season thing because – I'm of the I'm of the, the the field that playoff stats should count as overall stats. I think that should be across the board. I think that, that should be all leaders. So, but that's just another thing. Like we have to factor in LeBron in his playoff career. It's he's basically in year like 22. Just with I mean, you talk about the mm-hmm. wear and tear on his body. He's played the, that amount of games in the NBA. But it's just the way that we look at these stats is regular season only. So, I'm just kind of of that mindset. We're like, hey, you know, we have to also consider, you know. LeBron additional seasons and not just LeBron. I mean, obviously MJ had all those deep uh, playoff runs that added stuff to his body as well. They're extra seasons essentially. So I think that should be mutually exclusive across the field, but no, it's, it's one of those things where he's done it more efficiently. He's done it in 200 less games and Carl Malone played forever. I think, I think a lot of people forget about that or I think it was Carl Malone's last uh, season. Was 20 LeBron's. seasons. I think. Yeah. It was his first season. Uh, yeah. Carl Malone's oh, last season with the Lakers. Yeah injury riddled season for Malone well exactly so I think this is another notch in his belt I think the Lakers suck I think they're not going to do anything that's fine you know and it's probably better for LeBron because at this age no he's he's out he gets an early little vacation can get ready for the next season to just kind of keep going and hopefully retool this roster so too bad they don't have a draft pick though they could really use that yeah on legs (laughs) no draft picks are all right I mean they get I mean their best young players undrafted if we're talking Austin Reeves if we're being honest there so yeah well (laughs) how good would he be on a LeBron list team that's the question well, that's what Larry Bird said. I'm not trading for LeBron guys. I'm, they they look a lot better quote, playing yeah. next to LeBron. I, I love yeah. that. So, Because it's funny. Whenever LeBron leaves and there's like those couple guys that came in like during his time there, it's always interesting to see how long they last in the league. Oh, yeah. And like Norris Cole, I remember, maybe lasted a season or two after LeBron yeah. left the Heat, ended his career on the Pelicans. Like it's, it's, it's always funny for me. Uh, Jedi Osman. Seti, whatever his name is, still Seti. in the league though. I'm surprised. Yeah. Still on the Cavs. I like so Seti. good for him. I, I was I was betting he'd tumble off the cliff, um, in terms of his NBA career. Definitely, uh, but nope, he's still going. So good for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, a few days ago, we saw a little bit of a controversial play in the Celtics Warriors game. Is Boston guard Marcus Smart dove for a ball and into Curry's ankle? So X-rays came back negative. Steph's expected to mix miss about two weeks. So Jared. Going back and looking at this play, do you want to say this is a dirty play by Smart, or, or what, what's your take on this? No, it's not a dirty play at all. I watched it back a couple times, and the fact of the matter is, is it's just hard, playing hard basketball. Um, and that's how basketball should be played. In theory, you should be going 100% on every play to give your team the best advantage all game long to not let the other team slip back into the game. And Marcus Smart's just, as we know, one of those tougher players, one Mm -hmm. of those guys that prides himself on his defense, prides himself on his tough play. And he was just diving for the loose ball. He dived on the ball. He wasn't going for Curry's ankles or anything. Like, it wasn't intentional. Like, he got the ball. Like, obviously, then the Warriors got it in the scramble. But, like, he made a play on the ball and the ball alone. Curry's ankle just happened to be there. It's unfortunate for the Warriors. It's unfortunate for Stephen Curry. But if end of the day like steve kirk can be mad all he wants but that's just a hard play and it's just unfortunate that steph curry was the loser on that end of the deal um you look at any era of the nba and we always champion players for making plays like this like i can't tell you how often i see dennis rodman clips of him just diving out of bounds without Mm -hmm. regard for his body or whoever else is in his way whether fan player ref whoever cameraman um so I don't know. I, I nothing wrong with what I saw on this play. Yeah, I agree. This in my mind, this was not a dirty play whatsoever. Smart dove for the ball. He, and, and the thing is, he didn't even dive directly into Curry's ankle, but he more kind of rolled over onto it, which mm-hmm. is going to happen. And anytime a star player gets hurt, especially kind of in this aspect, and Curry's had problems in the past with his ankles, that's kind of been the area where we've been the most concerned for him. A lot, some people and some fans, especially, are the ones that go overboard and label these type of things as dirty. But in this case, I feel that's unfair for Smart. You know, Smart has a little bit of a past where fans have kind of labeled him dirty, especially not Celtics fans. I don't think Smart is a dirty player. I I won't even go that far. But I just take the word of Draymond on this one. You know, he's another one of those guys. He's a tough player. 
And he, even Draymond said, I can't call this play dirty, dirty. He called it a little bit maybe unnecessary, but not dirty. I think Kerr, you know, he was reacting in defense of his, of his superstar. Looking back on it, you know, I just can't label it dirty. You know, I'm not, trust me, I'm not the biggest Celtics fan in oh, the know. world. We know that. <laughs> But I got to be honest, you know, I don't think Smart was in any way attempting to injure any player. And I also think he was just trying to make a play on the basketball, which unfortunately ended up with Curry getting hurt, which he should be back hopefully around the start of the playoffs or actually a little bit before the playoffs, somewhere around there. So depending on how everything goes with his rehab. So we'll see. Everybody wants to see Steph Curry on, on the court. No one wants to see these stars getting injured. No one wants to see anybody getting injured. So I think it's just an unfortunate event, and I think – Really, there's not much more to make out of it. And anybody trying to just label it as this is the problem, or Marcus Smart needs to be stopped, I think that's a little over traumatic. So I think I'm glad to see that we were in agreement on that one because uh, this next segment here, I don't know if we're going to be in agreement on, Jarrett. So the Bulls have struggled, especially defensively through the injuries of some of their top guys. I'll give them that. And this has kind of led to a struggle among the league's top teams. So, Jarrett, kind of knowing what you know now about this Bulls team and you being a Bulls fan, are you a little worried about the end of this season? Um, I mean, the end of the season, it's definitely in jeopardy. I'm not expecting the bottom of this conversation where it's like the Bulls fall out of the playoffs. I, I don't think that's going to happen at all. Um, as you know, we're still trying to literally piece our team back together. Patrick Williams comes back next week. Uh, he's been cleared for full uh, – uh, practices and he was recalled um, from the Windy City Bulls G League team. So um, we're still waiting on Lonzo, who should be back in the next couple of weeks. Um, we haven't had a complete roster for 95% of the season. I mean, Pat Williams was out within five games. I was at that game when he like he fell basically on his wrist um, from like 10 feet in the air. Uh, it's it's just it's going to take some time. Like Bulls fans, I mean, NBA Twitter has been such a toxic, toxic place the last couple of weeks. Bulls oh, fans no, especially. shocks. <laughs> but it's been NBA really Twitter. Bad. It's been really bad lately. Like, yeah, I've yeah. never seen Bulls fans turn coat so fast on this team, aside from when Derrick Rose got hurt and then said, hey, I'm not returning because uh, I want to come back healthy next season. And then the whole city, or not the whole city, but half the city hated them, which then made me hate half our fan base and i still kind of do to this day <laughs> um and this is why it's because our expectations were so high for this team because the team came out of the gate guns blazing yeah and surpass expectations of the media of other teams their opponents and probably themselves because the chemistry looks so good because we saw like our defense at the time was top 10 probably close to top five it's just our expectations were way too high and we're starting to see now some of the glaring weaknesses of the roster that were very apparent at the start of the season where our, we're lacking size we're lacking rim protection we're forcing Nikola Vucevic to be a rim protector when typically that's not the role that he's accustomed to but he's mm -hmm. being asked to play um and it just shows that uh there's gonna be moves that need to be made. And I am okay with the Bulls looking like this right now because that's going to show, especially to Karnaschovas and the rest of the front office that, okay, here are the moves we need to make in the offseason. Now, whether that's moving some of our bigger pieces, like possibly packaging Vucevic in a trade to maybe mm -hmm. get some better defenders, like maybe a Miles Turner kind of piece, then I guess that's what happens if they think that's what's best for the team. Or if it's simply as we keep the same core together and we just try to add size through free agency, then that works too. Um, this Bulls team has a lot of potential. This year is probably just not going to be our year. It's not going to be our year. Maybe we can get past the first round. Uh, I'm not expecting a conference finals appearance. I, Regardless of how the end of the season turns out, I'm happy with the season. Because let's be honest, Bulls basketball is back. It's been dead for years. Yeah. So Bulls fans out there, if you're listening, be appreciative of what you've seen on the floor this far. Yeah. Yes, it's not perfect now. It's not what you want to see as we close out the season. We were in the first seed for a long time. Uh, honestly, I think I projected the Bulls as the fifth seed, which we're there now. And honestly, not a bad spot to be if we can hold this because uh, we're facing the Celtics in the first round then. And I, am, I, I like that first round matchup. 
I like that a lot better than potentially getting like a second seed and the Nets are at seven. And then that's who you're facing in the first round. Don't want to see Kevin Durant in the first round. So I just, I think Bulls fans need to chill out. We had a tough schedule this far and uh, I can't wait for next season, but this season's not over yet. And I can't wait to see how it plays out. Yeah. I was interested. I wanted to ask you, so what, what's the top? Well, like, what do you think is best case scenario this year for the Bulls? Like, like case- no, knowing where you're at right now, obviously, like, And we'll make our official picks, like, obviously, once we know playoffs come. But right now, if you're Mm -hmm. saying what's best-case scenario for the Bulls? Best-case scenario, I would say Bulls hold the fifth seed or even Mm -hmm. maybe get as high as the fourth. Um, Face a team like the Celtics in the first round, probably get a tough win in six or seven games. And just build playoff experience because there's, like, guys like Zach Levine on this roster, which I I forgot to mention Zach Levine. His knee uh, uh, uneasiness kind of worrying to me i hope it's nothing that will be significant and impact his career long term um he's Mm -hmm. definitely probably going to have off-season surgery on it to probably just clean up some scar tissue in there and stuff like that but um it'd be good for players like zach levine uh io desumo kobe white stuff like that to get playoff experience um zach levine's been in this league eight seasons hasn't played one playoff game not so much his fault as he's been on the timberwolves who are notorious for not being in the playoff (laughs) race and then just like i said the bulls have been dead since 2017 so there's no opportunity for him to get in the playoff race doesn't matter how good zach levine is as a player just wasn't going to happen with the with the rosters we've seen i mean come on we're paying cristiano felicio 32 million over four years you think (laughs) we're making the playoffs no so um best case scenario we make the playoffs get some guys some experience um see what demar derozan can do in a playoff series Mm -hmm. um i guess kind of evaluate our roster in the playoffs because as we all know playoffs are tougher um sometimes you'll need size and some nights sometimes the size will be on the bench the whole time because yeah. pl- teams are just running small ball so uh, i'm excited for the playoffs we're gonna make the playoffs calm down whether it's in a playing game that's fine i'm not worried about the plan I, I think we'll be fine so uh i just can't wait to see yeah. how the season winds up no definitely and so i, I kind of wrote down here if i'm a bulls fan who is very happy to see these teams turn around improved roster and, you know, you're excited about the future. I'm I'm still ecstatic, and I think that they're ahead of schedule. But ba- exactly what you said, if I'm a Bulls fan who thought that this team was poised to really make a deep playoff run and compete for a championship this year, then I'm worried if I'm in that camp. Um, Never, no one should be in that one. Yeah, th- but there are. There are people in that camp, I'll tell you that. I understand, you know, they haven't been at full strength for pretty much most of the season. But, you know, all teams deal with different types of injuries, especially during the regular season. And for me – you have to kind of learn to deal with some of them and still pull out some important wins. And obviously the the story of the Bulls so far this season is they have beat up on the teams that are below average and they have really struggled against the top teams in both conferences. So just a few numbers I put together, the Bulls this year are 0-3 against Miami, 0-2 against Milwaukee, 0-4 against Philly, 0-2 against Phoenix, and 0-2 against Golden State. So they've really struggled against those top teams. And I know that's really been the story for them, but I also don't think we need to overreact. I think we just need to be realistic. The Bulls, I don't think, expected to win a championship this year. They have now such a great base in place. They've they've done a lot of growing. They've done a lot of learning so far this season, and I think exactly what you said. They get into the playoffs, can win a hard-fought first-round matchup, maybe get knocked out round two, You know, go another six, seven games, just fight hard, show what it takes to kind of win in the playoffs is best for them. I think they have a great base in place that they can be a true contender, and I think they're on a fantastic path to get there. As much as I'd love to turn around and hate on them, I think they're still in a great spot. I just think a lot of people need to be realistic about these Bulls. No Mm -hmm. one really saw them coming as the number one seed in the East. A lot of people like like how you predicted, and I think I had them down there at the four and five right there in the middle, definitely in the playoffs with that roster. I think they were surprised by DeMar DeRozan, what he's been able to do this season, just coming out of absolutely nowhere. Zach Levine has been probably the greatest, I don't even want to say number two player, just one A player. I mean, those two have been fantastic together. So I think it's been great to see if you're a Bulls fan. I think you just need to be a little just realistic, which I'm glad to see that you are looking at it from that that lens that, you know, hey, just – you know, this has been a great season, regardless of how it ends. It's going to be great, and you guys are in a great position. You guys are fairly young, very young team moving forward. And like you said, I love, you know, Io Dosumo, him getting some minutes, especially in the playoffs. Kobe White, those kind of young guard plays. Zach Levine getting his feet wet there in the playoffs. 
And then I do love you got DeMar DeRozan, who's been there, done that in the playoffs. He hasn't won a championship, obviously, but he has been through some fights, and especially in that mm. Eastern Conference, the, the Raptors and uh, LeBron's Cavs have gone – they've gone rounds in the playoffs in his in his uh, tenure. So it's going to be exciting to see. I'm, I'm so looking forward to these playoffs. There's a lot of good matchups. I think the the Celtics is a tough matchup. I, I don't want to face the Celtics in round one. I mean – but to be honest, in the Eastern Conference, besides those bottom like Who seven, would you eight, want to face exactly. There's there's not a team. I'm like, well, give me Philly. Oh no, give me Milwaukee. Oh, definitely not. Oh, give me. You know, there's not a team. I'm like, give me them round one. We got an easy win. So it's gonna be rough. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be an old fashioned Eastern Conference just throwdown over there. I mean, you know, you look at Brooklyn. They're probably gonna be the seventh seed. No one wants to face Brooklyn in the first round. I mean, that is the scary seventh seed. Oh, well, they're eighth right now, but probably yeah. will be seventh. Scary seventh seed all the time. Oh. Want no part of that. No, mm-hmm. no, thank you. That's why so, I want uh, Miami to hang on to that one seed. Just they I got they got a they got the largest gap. I think the first seeds had basically all season. Yeah, two, like I think they're four at two and, and a half, half games right now. No, oh, I think it's only two and a half. half. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, it's only two and a half I mean, because right now who's in who's in second? Let's see, Philly, Philly. So I think yeah. uh oh, it's it's a three game. It's a three game gap. Okay. Yeah, so three games, which in the East, yeah, that is a that's pretty that's big, huge in the East. That's pretty big lead right now. So in there's you know seven and three in their last ten. You know Miami is just rolling along. I just want them to hold off Philadelphia, keep that one seed, just because I do not want to see Brooklyn in round one. But no, that's just the self and, and in me. the Brooklyn's two and a half games off of Toronto. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. All right, moving on here to our last segment before we get to TM up. I wanted to try out a new game that I am calling threat or fraud. So we're going to go through some teams that are kind of on a run or kind of surprising people. And we're going to say, say if we think these teams are true threats or if we think that they're actually frauds. So starting off here, I'm going to go with maybe the hottest team in the NBA and that's the Minnesota Timberwolves. So Jarrett, are the Timberwolves threats or are they frauds? Well, um, I think they're probably a fraud. I'm saying probably. Okay. I'm just going off uh, the Timberwolves history. Uh, they're they're not known for the playoffs. In fact, uh, most people our age can't probably remember a playoff series outside the one year they had Jimmy Butler. Yeah, that's because uh, they've made it one time since 2004, which is uh, wow. That's that's rough. So this team doesn't have a lot of playoff experience. Um, they're in, I believe the seventh seed right now. So they're going to have to go through the playing game, which is not going to be easy because, um, you could potentially have if the Lakers somehow figure a way out to <laughs> hold themselves together. Anthony Davis comes yeah. back. Um, they could potentially get to the eighth seed and that'd be your first game in the plan, the seventh and the eighth, um, which not ideal. Um, or you could have an easier matchup with the Clippers, which I'm not worried about the Timberwolves in that matchup. They should win that. But mm. then you're going to go against a team like the Grizzlies, most likely, who have the second seed. That's yeah. not going to be easy. Um, the only thing that the Timberwolves could have going for them in that matchup is uh, just the lack of experience on both sides in terms of playoff experience. So that could actually be a very fun series. But I'm not expecting the, the Timberwolves to do much. Uh, they're still they're a really young team um they still have some uh pieces to develop they still have some moves they can make um in the coming years it's but it's just they've been a pleasant surprise because let's be honest i did not expect any of this from the timberwolves this season a nine and they're nine and one in their last 10 games currently uh so hats off to them hats off to their coaching staff um but yeah they're probably a fraud yeah this might surprise some people but to me they're threats they are threats and they're the hottest team in the West and they've really found their groove defensively. And that's, what's scary to me. Carl Anthony Towns is turning into a superstar and they can really be a tough matchup in my eyes for one of the West tops teams. You met, you mentioned uh, Memphis. I, if I'm Memphis, I do not want to face the Timberwolves. I think they match up really well against them. I think you're able to put Pat Beverly on a playoff inexperienced John ja Morant. And we know what Pat Beverly can be. He is a headache. That's just what he is. Whether when the man wants to play, he plays. Whether it's actually his play or whether it's just him doing the ex- the other things, he's just a headache. I think Carl Anthony Towns matches up pretty well against, you know, like a Jaron Jackson Jr. I still like Carl Anthony Towns just because of his ability to stretch the floor because he's that new age type of center. 
We saw him obviously win the three-point contest. The dude can knock down some shots. So I think the Timberwolves truly are a threat. And I think if it is that 7-2 matchup where it is Memphis against Timberwolves in round one, I'd be on upset alert. I don't know if I'd pick him right here at this moment, but I would be on upset alert because I just think that matchup favors Minnesota. I think they kind of have that X factor a little bit or that kind of wild card, I guess I would say, in in, uh, Anthony Edwards. We've seen him go off at the beginning of the season, hasn't really done it so much recently, but they got a pretty good roster over there. D'Angelo Russell running the point. They got some good guard play. They got some good bigs, and I don't know. I I think they're they're a tough matchup, and if I'm Memphis – it's not a matchup I want to see in round one because I just think that's the like you said inexperience on both sides. But I don't know. I that I might be picking the upset on that one. So uh, moving on to our second team here, we got Boston Celtics. So are the Boston Celtics a fraud or are they a threat? Well, I can't wait for your answer, but uh, I'll give mine here first. Um, they're a fraud to me. Okay. Uh, we've seen. You're gonna get some hate for that one. Just to let you know. That's fine. Uh, bring the hate. I love it. I love it. Um, this team we saw early in the season, they struggled and they struggled tough to where we're like, Oh my God, they're not even going to make the playoffs. Um, now obviously they look like one of the hottest teams in the NBA. Jason Tatum's playing like an MVP candidate, uh, which is great for the city of Boston. Great for the team. Um, bad for Jace and his, uh, early yeah. and mid season predictions, <laughs> but hey, I uh, was right there for a while. They're going to miss the playoffs and I was close and uh, yeah, the turnaround changed it, but I was, yeah. I was on it. But I feel like for Boston, the higher they rise in the East, the scarier it is for them. Because you know who uh, who they're going to match up in the first round? If if the season ended today? Mm-hmm. My Chicago Bulls. Um, I'm entirely confident in that series for the Chicago Bulls. That's who I've, as I said earlier, that's who I want to face in the playoffs. We'll take Jason Tatum. We'll make it hell for their front court. Um, we're not worried at all. I, I would love that series. I prefer that series. We've seen so many of these Celtics teams go out early in the first, um, the past couple seasons. Um, I think, didn't they lose to the Pacers in the first round one? No, it wasn't the Pacers. No. So the people on TikTok, it may be very clear that they have made the Eastern Conference finals. In May, is it three of the oh. last four years or something like that? If I'm not uh, no, mistaken. there's no way it's three of the last four it years. It was something like that. Two of the last four years, it was something weird like they that. They made it early. They made it Brown's second year and Tatum's first year. And with that was without Kyrie Irving because he was hurt. Yeah. And then I think they made the next season, and I don't think they've been back since because then I think they had a first-round exit in Kyrie's final season. And then I think they made second round in the bubble they have made the conference finals in three of the last five years. They did it in uh, 20 or two year, two seasons ago against Miami. They lost yeah. to Miami. That was in the bubble. Mm-hmm. And the year before that, they lost in the second round to the Bucks. And then they went to back-to-back Eastern Conference finals in 2017 and 2018. Uh, those were both against the Cavaliers. When the Broncos. Okay. Yeah. So. But, no, I'm, I'm not too worried about the Celtics, Celtics team. That it's like I said, it's who I prefer. I think they're frauds. Yeah, I agree. And uh, for me on this one, I'll say prove me wrong, but I think they're frauds. I think they're wrong. I think I know they've been the best defensive team in the league for quite some time now. And I, but I just, you mentioned Chicago, and that right now most likely would be their first round matchup. I don't think they match up well with Milwaukee. I don't think they match up well with Philadelphia. I don't think they match up well with Miami. I just think at the end of the day, they're thro- they're frauds. I don't think they have the depth that they really think that they do. I mean, Peyton Pritchard, you know, he's, he's great. You know, he, he's fine. Like, what do you have coming off that bench that really kind of scares people? It's a like, weak you, bench. You don't have the depth. I get it. Credit to your coaching staff. They've done a great job, especially on the defensive end. I think a lot of defensive effort comes down to coaching, and that's a huge plus for you guys as far as the coaching goes. I just think when he gets to the playoffs, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. I've been on this for a while. I I, I originally picked them to miss the playoffs. I didn't see it on the roster. I don't think they improved that much at the trade deadline. I did like the pickup of Derek White. I didn't understand the pickup of Daniel Tice. But, like, that's just what they do. They just – they make these moves where it's like, he's a Celtic guy. We got to bring him back and average three points and two rebounds a game. That's that's our guy. But – I just don't understand it. I think they're frauds at the end of the day, and I think they're going to be. We're, I think we're going to be proven right, especially if it's a first round matchup against Chicago. They could be in for a first round and out. So, 
So I'm glad to see we're on the same page there. So moving on, our third team, we got the Dallas Mavericks. Are the Dallas Mavericks frauds or are they threats? This seems a threat. I don't know how, but uh, I thought they sank their season after training away Przingis, um, who already wasn't a great fit. But yeah, Dinwiddie off the bench? I was on that. I remember our trade deadline special episode where you said, I don't get this. Davis Bertans and Spencer Didwitty. And I said, Spencer Didwitty is the best player in that trade. They got the best player of the three. I could care less about Davis Bertans. Dude's terrible. But I, I was on this. I said, Spencer Didwitty. Spencer Didwitty. Yeah. So this team, the Mavericks have shaped up post trade deadline a lot nicer than I could have ever expected. And uh, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to keep my analysis short of this. Um, They have Luka Doncic, who we've seen since he made his first NBA playoffs. That guy is a problem in the playoffs. (laughs) Just ask the uh, the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, He's not going to make it easy for whatever team they're going to go against. I I don't know if they'll they'll win a playoff series, but um, it's they're not going to make it easy for whoever their first round opponent is. Um, And I think they have a great chance of defeating whoever that is who's uh would it be against the are they in the sixth seed right now yeah it might be the uh warriors oh they're in the fifth they'd face the fifth? jazz in the oh, first jazz. round if i'm the jazz i do not want to see luka Doncic in the first mm-hmm. round i i don't want to see that at all so um the mavericks are threats and i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it there yeah i love me some luka but unfortunately i say frauds and i oh. love luka Doncic. i do I don't think they have the depth on that roster to truly be considered threats. And we've seen this now. I think this will be our third playoff playoff in a row where we're looking like Luca is amazing. Luca is on a path that very few NBA players have been on as far as his talent and the stats that he puts up. I just think they don't have the roster right now. And I know I, People are going to get mad at because I bring it back to LeBron. It reminds me of early LeBron when he didn't have the teams around him where it's like, Oh, yeah. He's getting him to the playoffs. He He's putting up his numbers. He's doing everything that he can. Luca, I just don't think they have it yet. I love Spencer Dinwiddie. Do I think he's going to be making his playoff buzz, buzzer beaters in the playoffs? No. But I think Luca has everything that you need from a player. He will give their matchup truly everything that they can handle. Just ask the Clippers. They do not ever want to see Luca again. Even though they won both of those series, Luca gave them everything they could handle. At the end of the day, they need more than just Luca to truly go deep in the West. I just, I, it's, it's, I hope, I really hope I'm wrong. This is one of the takes I hope I am very wrong on. Unfortunately, I think they're frauds and it has nothing to do with Luca. I just don't think they have the team right now. So moving on to our last team here is the Denver Nuggets. So are they frauds or are they threats? They're threats. They have the reigning MVP who potentially could win another one this season. Um, they're getting a few guys back. We could see Porter Jr. and uh, Jamal Murray come back towards the end of the season, um, which will greatly help this team's improved odds despite the time they've missed because, let's face it, it's been Nikola Jokic and anyone that could throw on a jersey for the other four guys this season. And the Nuggets have been fighting in the West all year and have remained competitive. We've seen stretches where we're like, oh, my God, could they move up into the top three? Um, and... I don't want to face Jokic in the first round. Um, I yeah. believe they're currently in this, uh, the sixth seed, which would put them against Warriors. the Warriors. Yeah. I think they match up pretty good against the Warriors. The Warriors currently don't have much size, uh, especially with James Wiseman's yeah, uh, you, you status need Draymond, getting downgraded. You need Draymond to play big in that series if you're going to have a chance. Big. Exactly. And it's it's going to be a tough series if it does end up where it ends the nba ends today with warriors at three nuggets at six um that that's going to be a fun series uh battle of the point guards or should i yeah. say point center versus point guard um i can't wait for it oh man these playoffs i'm so excited for especially yeah. it's but, gonna be uh, interesting man then the nuggets are threats uh they're gonna get their guys back and Jokic is gonna Jokic gonna Jokic. <laughs> Uh, right now, I'm saying they're frauds. And the reason I'm saying that is barring the health of Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. I think even if they are back, I worry about their actual play. Like, if they're back, are they actually 100%? How, you know, the Jamal Murray, we haven't seen play in a very long time. We saw Michael Porter, I think he played at the beginning of the season, but not maybe a couple weeks at the beginning of the season. So 
I'm just worried about that rust. When it comes to the playoffs, you don't have a lot of time to knock these things off. So if we don't start to see them really return to the lineup, start to get, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes here, start to work their way into the rotation, kind of knock that rust off, then I'm a little bit worried because I don't think you have the time when it comes to the playoffs. I think at full strength, especially with the way that Jokic is playing, they can eventually truly be a contender. I think a lot of us forget about how much Jamal Murray was balling before he's gone through these injuries because Jamal Murray, especially in the playoffs, we saw him was he was going absolutely bananas. Bubble so Murray, man. He, it was it was something else to see. So I think they eventually can truly be a contender, but currently constructed, I have to lean towards fraud just because I don't know when those two guys get back. And I also don't know how healthy they will actually be when they get back. But this roster is scary. I mean, full strength, this roster is definitely scary. So. I can't I can't wait to revisit these four teams as we get into the playoffs and then into a couple rounds just to see yeah. where they all stack up and what happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. It's going to be a lot of fun once playoff rolls around. But we got to move on to our last segment on the TM Up podcast. That is, of course, TM Up. So, Jared, a couple weeks off. You got some technical foul builds up. Who's getting that technical foul? See, I have a, a double technical. Okay. Uh, so my first technical I'm throwing out there. Okay, that reporter after the Lakers Raptors game. I mean, you and I have both done sports reporting. We've both interviewed players and coaches and whatnot. That question was awful when uh, the reporter was asking Scotty Barnes, What impact has LeBron James had on you? And there's, there's a few problems with that. The first problem is all right, has there been any prior information? to warrant the question that yeah. Scotty Barnes is a LeBron fan. Because you look it up anywhere, there's nothing that where Scotty Barnes has said, oh, no. LeBron's my favorite player. Oh, I love LeBron, stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of a question that's kind of trying to like start a narrative that LeBron's like impacted an entire generation of yeah. fans that turned into players. And that's not always the case because – Let's be honest. He's lucky he's not asking, like, let's say if I, I turned into an NBA player or someone else from Chicago that grew up a Bulls fan, they don't like LeBron. Yeah. If anything, it'd be like, uh, I hated LeBron. He kept Derrick Rose out of the finals. Screw that guy. <laughs> Scotty Barnes was just like kind of like yeah. kind of went middle of the road. was like, uh, I'm a Kobe fan. So <laughs> nice try. It's just it's bad journalism. It's bad. It was a weird question, too. Yeah. It, was, it was just weird. Um, my second technical foul, I'm throwing um, also around the Laker Raptors thing. I'm throwing it at, uh, at a specific fan in Toronto who approached Russell Westbrook as Westbrook uh, looked like he was getting into a car, getting into a bus, basically just saying, hey, man, play better, blah, 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 blah. Like, okay, we get it. Westbrook is having a career worst season. Yeah. He's not fitting with the Lakers. We get it. But the disrespect I've seen this man get, like, in person to just people that couldn't pick up a basketball and do anything with it, it's ridiculous. Like, this is one of the 75 greatest players ever. This guy was an MVP as a fifth seed team. Mm -hmm. He's the only guy in the last 50 years to average a triple-double for a season. He's done it multiple times. The Westbrook back back, yeah. disrespect in person has got to stop. The, the threats – the death threats that Laker Nation and maybe some other fans out there are throwing towards his family and stuff like that, that shit's got to end. It's ridiculous. Like, this is what I'm saying. NBA Twitter is so toxic. Like, yes, we all we all see what's going on in the court. Westbrook is not Westbrook anymore in terms of the all-star, superstar point guard that we've seen for most of his career. And that's fine. It happens. It happens to superstar. I'm sorry, Laker Nation, that he's taken up $44 million of your cap space this year and <laughs> next year, and that it has not worked out, and that it's not a super team, and that you guys are sitting in ninth. Yeah. But just leave the man alone. Like, I don't get why regular people think that they have, that it's like their right to approach people of influence mm-hmm. in person and just treat them like shit. It's... Yeah. I'm annoyed. So double technical, all happening in Toronto. Uh, I I took a little bit of a different approach. I got to tee up the Orlando Magic's defense. And look, in back-to-back games, this team gave up an easy 60-piece to Kyrie. And then you give up 51 points to Sadiq Bey, which no Kyrie slander, but is there a little curve on the Kyrie 61 when the next game they give up 51 to Sadiq Bey? 
Like, is there a little, like, like it was very impressive at the time. We're like, oh, wow. You know, I think there's a little curve on it. Like, oh, but it was against the Orlando Magic. Just a little bit. Um, Magic are bad, dude, no doubt. But you have to get some sort of defensive pride in you to not let the opponent pop off on you like that. Like, everybody's like, pack the bags. We're going to Orlando. I want to go play Orlando. I'm going to get – my next contract is going to be based off of this next game I play in Orlando. Like, they're just – they're ready, dude, now. So, you have to get better. You can't let this happen in back-to-back games. It's just a bad look. I don't care how bad of a team you are. you got, like, the same record as the Thunder. But the Thunder are even – like, they look competitive in a lot of their games. Magic is just like, oh, the Magic are on. Franz Wagner is going to score 24. That's about it. That's all I'm looking at. Like, this was awful, dude. This was bad. I got to say, whenever I have a player in my sleeper fantasy basketball league playing against the Magic, I select him. that day for <laughs> I select him. that day to play him. Straight um, up. But hey, our uh, our former colleague Kobe Price, though he's he's got a he's got a front row seat to some like all time yes, performances. <laughs> yes, in our he does. So at least if the team's not playing great, he can he can yeah. enjoy the show. Exactly. He's got <laughs> something to write about. No, that's awesome, man. But <laughs> Shout out to Kobe. Exactly. Uh, that's all we have this week on the TMO Podcast, guys. I want to thank you guys all for joining us. Be sure to follow along on all of our social media platforms for some more fun NBA content throughout the week. So thank you all for listening. We'll catch you guys later. Make sure to share us with your family and friends.